Welcome to this class. Today we would be talking about the concept of opportunity cost and the world trade blocks. So before we start with what is opportunity cost, in the previous session we have talked about the trade and the concept of comparative advantage. Today we would be discussing the concept of opportunity cost in a very, very simple manner. So what is an opportunity cost? So here is a child who has secured good marks in the exam. Okay. The child, uh, the mother of the child asks the mother, what do you want as a gift? The child says, I want a doll set and a storybook. Okay. Now, the mother asks the child to choose one of the two options, either to go for a doll set or to go for a storybook. So the child keeps thinking and child has to give up one of the two options in order to gain something. Okay. So this is explained by the concept of opportunity cost. So basically what we say opportunity cost is doing a trade-off between the two things when you have limited resources and that trade-off can be plotted on a production possibility curve. So you have a production possibility curve. And here is your choice for a storybook. And here is your choice for dulcet. So if you say I'm devoting five hours to my be devoting zero hours playing. Okay. But if you say I'm devoting five hours playing, you would be devoting zero hours to study. If I move one step here, I'll be moving two steps here. Okay, so if I'm changing, if I'm reducing one hour of a study, I could get two hours to play more. Okay, so that is what is we are trying to understand by means of opportunity cost. Any po point which is outside this curve is un unattainable. I cannot say I want to achieve a point here because I have in all five hours of that I have to adjust whether I need to study or play. Okay. Since the child is thinking to take one toy which is meant for play, another thing which is meant to study, the child is really confused where I would be devoting most of my time. So in this case, what happens is usually a trade-off. To understand this, in a simple language, we can say opportunity cost is the value of best alternative for con. Okay. So for example, if the child opts for play, okay, and less marks in examination, at that time, the child might realize, okay. The value of storybook that the child has foregone. Okay, so the value of best alternative foregone. So here, if the child is getting asking for a doll set and playing a lot with it, and implicatively getting less marks in exam, at that point, child might realize that if I would have got a storybook, I could have read it in fun also, and I could have scored good marks in examination also. So at that point of time, the child would realize the value of the storybook. Okay, but at the point when the child is deciding what to think, what to get for that for that point of time, both the things are equally important for that child. So at that point, he considers that he is assuming the best choice, and the cost incurred is by not enjoying the benefit that. He would or he or she would have taken for the second best choice available. Okay, so this you can understand by a simple PPC. So here you have increasing cost of opportunity cost. Okay, so if I am reducing 50 units here, I am gaining 10 units here. Then you have a constant PPC curve. Uh, sorry, a constant line where you would have a 
constant opportunity cost. So if I am reducing 10 units here, I would be gaining 10 units here. Okay. And finally, you have a decreasing slope where you have decreasing opportunity cost. So if you are re reducing 5 units, you would be gaining 10 units. Okay. So the most common cases when we talk about opportunity cost is this. That's the production possibility curve. And it has increasing opportunity cost. Now, for example, let's take alternative A and B. I have apples and fishes. A has 10 apples and 10 fishes. B has uh, 4 apples and 8 fishes. Now the opportunity cost for apples for A would be 10 fish per 10 apple. Okay. For B would be 8 fish per 4 apples. So in this case, who has a lesser opportunity cost? A. So the answer here would be 1 and here would be 2. So A has less opportunity cost as compared to B. The next case, opportunity cost for fishes in case of A would be again 10 apples for 10 fishes and B would be 4 apples for 8 fishes. So you have half here and one here. So in this case, the opportunity cost is less for B. Okay. So opportunity cost for fish is less for B. That means B has comparative advantage to produce fish and A has comparative advantage to produce apples. This we have already understood in the concept of comparative advantage also. Okay. So this is the basic concept of opportunity cost. Now we would be talking about the patterns of world trade. Now, when we talk about patterns of world trade, there are a few things we must be very clear about. The first is, when we talk about the world trade, we take into account the industrial trade. Okay. Then the GDP of the region, industrialization, MNC, globalization. Okay. Then the developed nations of the world have nearly 75% of the exports. Of this, 83% of the exporters of manufactured goods. Then, in developing nations, you have only 25% export. Of these, only 56% is in the manufacturing sector. Now, what are the stages of world trade? The stages of world trade, let's take before 1970s, what was the scenario? It was mainly commodity trading. Okay. There were huge custom restrictions. And the transportation cost was a lot to bear. The next is 1970 to 1990. You have high mobility. Of production factor. So, a lot of production factors, FDI, foreign direct investment comes in, and there is diffusion of container, containerization. That means whatever is contained into one nation is slowly and gradually diffused to the nearby regions. So, that is diffusion of contain, containerization. Then you have 1990. 1995, the next stage, at this stage we call it as an initiation of global production. Okay, so you have good production network and supply chain management. There is emergence of integrated commodity. And then the next phase that was 1995 onwards, 
you have an era of globalization where the whole world becomes a small village and you can find all brands across the globe. Then there were in intermediate, there were periods of recession. The most common recession was 2007 and 2009, the recent recession. To understand these trade blocks, there were various, uh, these stages, there were various trade blocks that were formed. We would be talking and covering the trade blocks in a separate session. The main aim of these trade blocks was to manage and promote trade in the spatial regions. And how that was possible? The various trade organizations was WTO, World Trade Organization. You have Mercursor, that was in South Africa, South America. You have NAFTA, that is in North America. You have GATE. Okay. Then, what are the challenges that the world trade faces? This is the most important topic. The first is you have buyer indebtedness. That means the buyer is not in a position to purchase and pay for the products. There is non-acceptance. Okay. There is intervention. So government interaction is to prevent the transmission. You have political risk. There is a risk of credit. What does this mean? Buyer uh, can take the possession of goods prior to payment. So it's not sure whether the payment would be into the account of the seller or not. So there is a credit risk. The next is supervisory risk. If there is no good supervision, the world trade can, can be difficult. Okay. The next is war, political instability. We already talked about political risk. So the war or any other terrorism activities. And the last is risk of unfavorable exchange rate. What does this mean? For example, if I'm trading a commodity from India to United States today, and the conversion rate is one USD is equal to say 60 Indian rupee. Okay, so what would happen uh, after 10 years, my scenario can be one USD can be equivalent to 100 rupees, or it can be equivalent to only 10 rupees. So I always face a risk of unfavorable exchange rate. So it can be unfavorable for United States if the exchange rate increases and it can be unfavorable for me if the exchange rate decreases. So these are the things that you need to take into account while understanding the concept of world trade. So in this session, we have talked about the basics of opportunity cost and the concept of world trade. So have a good day ahead. We will be talking more about the trade concepts in the further classes.